Welcome to Microsoft Build 2017. My name is Victor Weiss. I am from the Visual Studio team. And we're here today to talk about a new powerful way to develop in Visual Studio. A very simple concept. Prior to Visual Studio 2017, those of you who maintained project and solution files for your code bases enjoyed the full richness of Visual Studio IDE. This includes convenient navigation, powerful editing with IntelliSense, source control integration, build, and debug. However, code bases that didn't have projects and solutions were pretty much limited to a single file editing and some debugging. In Visual Studio 2017, we combined the best of both worlds. Uh, in addition to solutions, you can now also open folders with your source files and enjoy many of Visual Studio IDE features. So next, I will show this to you in action in our demo. So for this demo, we're going to use the SQL Server Samples repository. And in this repository, you can think about it, it has many, many samples on many popular languages that you need to know to talk to SQL Server. So I already cloned this repository locally, here it is. So let's take a quick look here. Uh, it's a pretty large repo, about quarter gigabyte, uh, 7,000 files. Um, there is no, no solution file in the root, so how do I even start exploring it? Well, now the best way to explore it is to say, hey, Visual Studio, please open this folder for me. Um, and we just select the folder and say open. First thing you may notice how quickly it was, just less than a second, and we already see the tree here on the left. Uh, we can start opening files, that's an MD file, we've got some color highlighting, which is cool. Uh, the Visual Studio will scan, scan the folder on the background, but you should not be blocked uh, by, by the scanning. Um, and here we see the familiar Solution Explorer, uh, but instead of the solution, we actually see the files exactly as they appear on the disk, with an exception that will hide some of the files. If you want to see all files, um, you can toggle, toggle this, uh, this button and you see, you know, .git, .vs that were hidden from you because you usually don't need them for your day-to-day -day development. So now, uh, the Visual Studio capabilities that I will show here today, they're already familiar to most of Visual Studio developers. The um, important part here, the magic happens because these features work without solutions and projects in many cases. So um, let's uh, start with something simple. So Visual Studio on the background uh, scanned the folder, found all projects that uh, are available in this folder and listed them here uh, on the startup item. Um, so let's select uh, console client, sounds interesting. And here it is, uh, we can go to the program. And we, Visual Studio detected that this program.cs belongs to this project file. Um, um, and uh, our you know, favorite features here, such as IntelliSense, will continue to work. So for example, we can pick to definition, see the implementation of the SQL data generator constructor right here. Um, so next, I'm going to edit the code. So the first thing I want to do is to uh, log here uh, the arguments. So console. Um, and you can see the auto completion works just beautifully. Right line, string, join. Uh, so we're going to join these arguments uh, with a space in between. All right, uh, so I already uh, I actually made a mistake here on purpose to see how Visual Studio will catch it. But for now, we're just going to press a five. Uh, it will take uh, a couple seconds to, to build the application. And here it is, we already see the error. So we don't want to continue, we'll just say no here. Uh, double click on the error, and apparently, uh, join expects two arguments, uh, or multiple arguments. So let's fix that right here. I'll put a breakpoint. Let's do it in the right place. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it right here. And uh, press a five. So now we rebuild the program and it's running and here we are debugging in Visual Studio uh, a c -sharp file without um, any solution. Um, and you know, your favorite debugger feature will work such as diagnostic tools, you can see local variables and so on. So I'll hit a five, the program will continue, it will start. Um, but of course it didn't print anything because we didn't pass any argument to it. So let's close it here. 
um, and uh, I'll show you next how you can uh, customize debugging. Uh, this thing is specific to the folder view, so on pretty much any file that you can run, you can right click here and say debug and launch settings. In open folder, you customize debugging uh, by editing a JSON file. This is the file launchvs.json that we created in .vs folder and provided the template uh, to customize um, debugging for, this, for CS projects. And it's just enough for me to start typing here um, and uh, we'll see IntelliSense of different uh, parameters that we can customize. Arg sounds intuitive. So let's do it here and uh, it's an array. And one thing to mention is that we'll dynamically generate the schema for you depending on the kind of debugger you want to customize. So let's pass some uh, string here. Okay, uh, so is this now just enough to save it and press F5 again. Um, and boom, we just printed, uh, printed the string. Cool, um, so let's stop debugging and do something more interesting that doesn't have um, any projects. So because Visual Studio indexed the entire folder on the background, we can press control comma and we'll get uh, to this place where we can search, search our folder for file names and symbols. So I'll type something as generic as index and Visual Studio will know that this is a variable in the um, our JavaScript file. Uh, but we can keep scrolling and uh, we'll see that some of these are the file names. Um, um, this one is, is interesting. This is actually a class in a PHP. So a nice easy way to search the entire folder um, across your file names, across different symbols, multiple languages. Uh, but now I'm going to narrow the search to index.html and uh, pick the one uh, with the geo. Um, so here we have our HTML, um, some JavaScript there. So one thing to mention, if you want to get to the file in the tree, you can just click um, sync with active document button right here. Um, and of course, we have an easy way for you to go and see that file on disk. Um, you can double click on it and open it in the browser. So I'll do it side by side here so it's easier to, to see. Um, so apparently it's, it's some kind of map, uh, but because it's an HTML, I can just go here and start playing with it, adding some text uh, like that. Um, we can then you know, use some ID features, let's say surround this with the div. Uh, and because it doesn't require any build, uh, we can just save here and hit refresh and here is our text. Um, now we can look into this uh, JavaScript and um, um, it's apparently some map API that I'm personally not familiar with, but it has some interesting methods to say set center that we want to play with. So like by default, uh, the map is centered in the United States, but if we change it to zero, save it, uh, refresh, and here we are uh, in Europe now. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, going back to the Visual Studio, of course, uh, we will continue supporting our source control integration. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, we, the file is now checked out. We can uh, say hey compare with unmodified and we'll see our changes right here and next let's just uh, undo our changes and here they are they're gone all right so the next thing i want to show is let's say you are a python developer and you want to see what kind of python scripts are available in this folder so uh, i'm going to type py and uh, narrow the search just to files and there are a bunch of Python files here, apparently. Um, I'll pick this one, um, something related to Windows. And here we can see right away a couple errors that we're going to go ahead and fix. So squiggly lines highlighted them for us. Okay, and um, as we did uh, for C Sharp, we're going to um, output uh, parameters for the script. So we're going to import Sys uh, print and IntelliSense just be works beautifully here uh, as well. So, and here we are. I'm going to put a breakpoint here and uh, we're ready to start running. But the thing about scripts is that you can have gazillions of scripts in your folder and you want a very easy way to just run the script that you're editing. Um, so that's why here we can select the current document. Um, 
and press F5. And here we are debugging a Python file on disk, no project, no solution. Um, you know, we can see the local variables and so on. Uh, but again, in this case, we didn't print anything because we didn't pass anything to the script. So let's stop debugging. And now we're going to use our familiar gesture to uh, the same one that we use for C Sharp to customize our settings for debugger. And you may notice here that uh, this time we generate a slightly different template because the template will be um, will vary based on the debugger. For example, uh, for Python debugger, you can pass interpreter arguments separately from the script arguments. Um, but right now, let's just uh, grab some text, uh, pass it into the script arguments. Um, okay, let me do that again. Uh, pass it to the script arguments. Here we go. We're going to save it uh, back to our file and uh, start debugging. And of course, you know, here we are, our RMS will pass just beautifully here. All right, um, now I'm going to talk about one more thing. Um, in many cases, um, many code bases have uh, parts of it which are uh, packaged into the solutions, the one that you usually build. Um, but there can be scripts that uh, are outside of the solution and don't naturally belong there. So we made it very easy for you to transition between folders and solutions. So here we have this toggle button um, and we will list solutions that we found in this folder. So you can open the solution by just you know, selecting it here and here's your familiar solution view. And then you can toggle back to folder. We'll keep the solution loaded on the background so toggling between them is instantaneous. All right, so uh, let's recap what we saw in the demo and what open folder can actually do for us. Um, so you, can, you saw that we can edit, edit our C Sharp code with a million telesense, we can debug and customize it. We can have this very lightweight save and refresh cycles for your web technologies, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. We edited, debugged a Python file and this will work for many other scripts. Those scripts that are not supported yet can be easily supported by the um, script language authors who can uh, do that by providing a simple extension to Visual Studio. Um, you can search files and symbols across entire folder, across all languages. You have familiar source control integration. And then you can customize, build and debug by editing JSON files. Uh, you can also put part of the JSON files anywhere you want in this folder, check it into your repository and share with your team. And of course, the same approach works great for C and C Sharp code bases. In fact, um, our new CMake feature in Visual Studio 2017 was built solely around uh, open folder. There was no solutions and projects. Uh, there will be a dedicated session uh, to this topic, so if you're interested, certainly, certainly check it out. Um, I will leave you with a couple links if you want to learn more. The first link is for developers. Uh, who want to open folder and customize it. The second link is uh, to extenders who may want to bring their language, their build system, uh, their debug engine to the open folder mode. And apparently it's pretty easy to do. We had an example when someone from Visual Studio community integrated um, an existing debugger engine to, to the script language in less than 30 lines of code. Thank you very much for your interest and time. Happy coding. Thank you.